Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk about buffers. But before we talk about buffers, let's first talk about non-buffered aqueous solutions. Let's suppose we have some sort of solution here. This can be salt water, this can be sugar water, some sort of aqueous solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some hydrochloric acid to this. Alright, if we add some hydrochloric acid to this, which is a strong acid, then what's going to end up happening is that we're going to have an increase in the concentration of H plus ions and therefore a decrease in the pH of this solution. All right. So by adding a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, we're going to increase the hydrogen ion concentra concentration and therefore decrease the pH of this solution. It's going to become more acidic. Conversely, let's think about this. What if I add a strong base like sodium hydroxide to this solution? What if I add some NaOH? The NaOH is going to dissociate and there are going to be some free-floating hydroxide ions in this solution. Well, if we increase the hydroxide ion concentration of this solution, then we will also be increasing the pH of this solution. Okay? So, in a non-buffered solution, by adding strong acids or strong bases to this, we can cause a, a, a drastic fluctuation or change in the pH of this aqueous solution. Let's take a look at how a buffered solution works now. In a buffered solution, if we add a strong acid to this buffered solution or a strong base to a buffered solution, this solution is going to resist changes in its pH. And that is because a buffered solution is a solution that can resist changes in pH. And how do we create a buffered solution? Well, they are created by adding a weak acid to the solution along with a salt containing the weak acid's conjugate base, okay? And they can also be created by adding a weak base and that weak base is conjugate acid. All right, so let's take a look and see what we're talking about here. Let's suppose we have a beaker of water and we're going to add a weak acid to this water. We're going to go ahead and add some acetic acid. If I add a weak acid, like acetic acid, to this water here, what ends up happening is that it does not ionize uh, completely. It does not dissociate completely. So if I put this in water, what we're going to end up having is some of these guys are going to stay together. They're not going to dissociate. And some of them are going to break apart into C2H3O2- ions and H plus ions. Okay, so if we have a weak acid, it's not going to dissociate completely. And we're going to have some of this right here, some hydrogen ions and some uh, C2H3O2- minus ions. Okay. Furthermore, if we add a salt containing the conjugate base, keep in mind that the conjugate base of this weak acid here is just simply C2H3O2-. And if I add or if I connect that to this sodium right here, what I will end up with is a salt containing the conjugate base. And so now if I put this in my water here, it's going to dissociate as well. And we're going to end up with a bunch of sodium ions floating around in that water. And we're going to end up with some acetate ions floating in that water as well. Okay? So, a buffered solution consists of two parts. It consists of the weak acid. And then it consists of the weak acid's conjugate base, essentially. All right? So, what ends up happening now is if you introduce to this solution a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, this is going to dissociate completely in water and the free-floating hydrogen ions are going to bond with the conjugate base to produce the weak acid. Okay, So there's not going to be any H plus ions floating around in that solution because they're going to be used to bond with the C2H3O2 minus ions producing the conjugate, I'm sorry, the weak acid over here. And because there won't be any H plus floating around in this water here, or any more H plus floating around in this water here, the pH of the solution won't decrease. Okay? Also, take a look at this. If we add a strong base to this solution, for example, if we add potassium hydroxide, it's going to dissociate and there's going to be hydroxide ions floating around in that water and you might think that the pH level is going to increase, but that's not what ends up happening. What ends up happening is that these hydroxide ions from the base, the strong base, they're going to react with the weak acid. The weak acid here is going to donate an H plus to this OH and produce water over here. 
Okay, so all the OH minus ions, when you put this in water, are going to be consumed. They're going to they're going to bond with this hydrogen from the weak acid to produce water over here. And look at this, the conjugate base over here. All right, so in a buffered solution, when you add a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, the hydrogen gets used up. So there's no or there's no increase in the amount of hydrogen ions and therefore no decrease in the pH. Also, if we add a strong base, right, those hydroxide ions, when it dissociates, end up getting used to make water and the conjugate base over here. All right, so there's no increase in hydroxide ions and therefore no increase in the pH. So that is how a buffered solution works. Now let's apply this concept to a real life situation. If we take a look at human blood, human blood has a pH of about 7.4. If the uh, pH of your blood decreases to about 6.8 and becomes more acidic or becomes acidic, uh, you can possibly die. Also, if the pH of your blood increases to about 7.8, you can also die. All right, so our blood pH needs to stay right around 7.4. And now, how does this do this? How does it do this? Well, blood is a buffered solution, or it has components that make it a buffered solution. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I'm not injecting hydrochloric acid intravenously. I'm not injecting sodium hydroxide intravenously, so my blood pH shouldn't increase and it shouldn't decrease. It should stay around 7.4, but that's not what's happening at all. What ends up happening is when you breathe in, you're breathing in oxygen, right? You're breathing in oxygen, and what ends up happening is that oxygen gets attached to the red blood cells that carry that oxygen throughout your body and then the cells take that that oxygen and they use it right they use it and what they end up doing is releasing carbon dioxide back into the bloodstream all right and when carbon dioxide reacts with the water that is in your bloodstream it produces a substance that's supposed to be an arrow here but that is going to produce a substance called carbonic acid. Okay? So, there is constantly an influx of carbonic acid into your bloodstream. So you might be wondering, well, if there's always uh, carbonic acid being added to my bloodstream, then why doesn't the pH of blood decrease? <clears throat> well, that is because your blood also has a conjugate base or this conjugate base in it. It has sodium hydrogen carbonate, right? The conjugate base of H2CO3 is HCO3 minus, and if we bond that to sodium, we have a salt containing the conjugate base of this weak acid right here, right? So we have a weak acid. We have its conjugate base here, or the salt containing the conjugate base in our bloodstream, and therefore we have a buffered solution, all right? So we have some sodium hydrogen carbonate, and we have some um, carbonic acid, and together those create a buffered solution, and therefore if you increase, if you try to increase the pH of this solution by adding or introducing an acid, that won't end up happening, because uh, what ends up happening is that those hydrogen ions from the acid are going to end up bonding with the HCO3 to produce your weak acid. And if you try to introduce a base to the solution or your blood, what ends up happening is that those hydroxide ions end up bonding with the hydrogen from your weak acid to produce water. Therefore, the pH of your blood never really fluctuates much, much past 7.4 unless there's some sort of issue. So that is a buffers, or those are buffers, and that are buffers. There are buffered solutions, and I hope that was helpful.